Well, hello there, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of Wednesdays in the Word. Wednesdays in the Word is your midweek devotion intended to encourage and challenge you to live a life worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is week 16 of our journey through the foundational passages of the Bible in one year. We have been using the F260 Bible Reading Plan from Replicate Ministries for this journey. This week, we find ourselves in the book of 1 Samuel, reading and learning more about David. David is the son of Jesse from Bethlehem. David is called in the Bible a man after God's own heart. And David would become the second king of Israel, and some would say the greatest king of Israel. And I think they would be right. From the lineage of David would also come the Messiah, the Savior, Jesus Christ. But this week, we read about David's early years. We'll be reading about his defeat of Goliath in a very famous and popular story, David and Goliath. But this defeat and David's success against Goliath would lead to many more military successes. In fact, we read in 1 Samuel 18, 5, that David marched out with the army and was successful in everything that Saul sent him to do. But something interesting began to happen. David's success began to take an effect or have an effect on Saul. Saul became jealous and attempted to kill David. What put Saul over the top and what angered him so much where he would resort to this kind of actions against one of the most popular figures uh, in Israel? Well, as they marched back from defeating the Philistines, the city was full of joy. There was dancing and the ladies were singing this song. Saul has killed his thousands. David his ten thousands. You can see how a leader, a king, might take offense to that, how it might bruise his ego just a little bit, and he began to be enraged with jealousy. So in chapter 19, we see that Saul orders his son, Jonathan, and all his servants to kill David. But Jonathan had become a friend of David's. Jonathan had entered into a covenant with David. Jonathan had aligned himself with David. And so when the order from Saul came down, Jonathan went to David and warned him, and David was able to escape. Jonathan understood that God had appointed David to be the next king of Israel. Jonathan also understood that it was God who was granting David so much success, and that it was God blessing David and blessing the nation of Israel. That David in and of himself could not be successful, but it was God working through David and working in David that was granting the successes that he was having. And so what we see, I believe, with Jonathan is a man who is committed above all else to obeying God, even when his dad gave him an order. He is putting his faith in God above his family. Why? Well, I believe that Jonathan loved the Lord with all his heart, mind, soul, and strength as he had been taught. And you know, I think that Jesus, and I know that Jesus teaches the same thing with the great commandment. Jesus says through the great commandment that we are to love God and love others. That our loyalty and obedience to God should take priority in our lives. And as we love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, we will begin to love the things that God loves. We will begin to do the things that God has called us to do. And one of those things is loving other people. Jesus modeled that very lifestyle. Jesus modeled a love for God above all else. But he, mo he modeled a love for people that was unmatched and unseen in his day. He was a sacrificial servant who loved so much that he died on a cross for the sins of of the world that he loved. But we also see Jonathan modeling this same thing as well. Jonathan loved the Lord. Obeying the Lord was his top priority. And because of that, he loved people, people like David and others. So I would like to ask you this question this morning. Do you truly love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength? Is there anything standing between you and loving God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength? I'd encourage you and challenge you to meditate on that question today. 
Maybe even take time to journal out the things that may be standing between you and God, things that you may prioritize over God, things that you may be loving more than you love God. Spend time in prayer the rest of this week, asking God to open your eyes to those things that maybe have become routine and you're unaware that they are standing in between you and God. Ask God to open your eyes, seek him, and allow him to speak to you through his word. I challenge you to spend time with the Lord this week, loving God and loving others. May God bless you and have a great rest of your week.